Okay, okay. But, um, so yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get started. Let's go! The northern city of Liverpool, England, would bear witness to one of the most shocking and horrific cases in its history. Police on Merseyside say that two-year-old James Bulger, who disappeared from a shopping precinct at the weekend, was horribly murdered and then dumped on a railway line. They say that someone must know the identity of the two boys who took James from the precinct. Inch by inch, the police have searched the railway line where two-year-old James Bulger's body was found yesterday. The scene is still protected from the elements for forensic work. The body itself was removed late last night. His uncle had identified him. It had been spotted earlier by four schoolboys playing. The blurred images of two youths seen taking James away are now all over the city. The public say detectives hold the key to finding them. They believe James was killed locally, then his abandoned body was hit by a train. We know it is a murder inquiry. There's, there's not as we'd first hoped we were going to find James and return him to his parents. It is horrific what has taken place, and there must somewhere be somebody who will know the identity of the two boys who were seen with James. James's blue and mustard hood, seen here in a security video, has now been recovered. It had been missing from his clothing but was found nearby. Police have set up a temporary base in the shopping centre. They're warning parents that other children could be vulnerable. For goodness sake, keep tight hold of your children. Poor James only went missing from his mother for a matter of seconds and he'd gone and disappeared. It was a warning heeded as parents picked up their children from school. I've said to him that if he doesn't hold me hands, then, you know, an autumn man's going to take him and all that. It's on your own doorstep, isn't it? I mean, I come strand every day with my kids. Of course, it's great. It's great with everybody. The shadow of this murder is hanging heavily over Liverpool. As flowers built up around the scene, James's family have spent the day being counselled by specially trained officers. Dozens of bunches of flowers have been laid in response to a crime whose shadow is hanging heavily over the city, the appalling murder of a defenceless toddler. James suffered truly horrific injuries, said the police, before his body was dumped on a railway and hit by a train. The discovery of his remains has led to a massive public response. Detectives are tonight studying the evidence so far accumulated. But police still haven't traced these two youths, photographed leading James away by a security camera. Inch by inch, officers have searched the line today, trying to establish the exact sequence and timing of events. The inquiries have gone on all day, and they've been going on all evening. The search as urgent as ever for the vital clue that will lead the police to whoever killed a helpless two-year-old. Today, the police investigating the murder announced a breakthrough in their inquiries. Following the abduction of James Bulger from the New Strand shopping precinct in Bootle on Friday the 12th of February 1993 and the subsequent findings of his body on the railway line in Walton on Sunday the 14th of February, two boys aged 10 years from Walton area have been arrested and are currently being interviewed by Merseyside police at police stations on Merseyside. Today's announcement came after hundreds of calls to the incident room overnight following the first screening on television last night of an enhanced video photograph of the two youths seen with James. It can no longer be shown for legal reasons. Almost 27 years later, this surveillance image remains etched in the minds of the millions familiar with the case of James Bulger. I'm literally holding it in. I want to pause so bad. Everyone in my I, chat's making fun of me, okay? I was impressed you didn't pause for I that I just, long. like, three minutes and 48 seconds is probably the longest I've ever gone without pausing. Oh, my God. I okay, so I had to do it. I had to do it just for this, this stupid reason. And I'm also going to let you know that I just... Like, your presence here is stopping me from doing a dumbass accents that I normally would do. I'm like, I'm like 85% less bravophobic currently than I normally would be. Like, normally I would just be making fun but of... why like, are you holding making, back? Making fun of British people, making fun of their teeth, making fun of, uh, you know, the fact that they have dental and they, yet still they just don't get that stuff fixed up. Who knows? Making fun of their accents, different regional accents. Listen, I don't want you to hold back, but you I'm know, not doing bullying right people for their appearances and stuff. If you can you can definitely, you know, if you want to bully them for their accents, you can do that. Yeah, I would never do that. No, I'm I'm a very nice person and uh I, I of course <laughs> would sure. never make I would never make fun was, of British people. 
Yeah, I was literally watching your stream right before this call, and I'm pretty sure you were trying to do some weird accents, but you know. What do you mean weird accent? Oh, uh, that was <laughs> that was a that was a Scottish accent. No, I'm just kidding. That was a Kiwi or Australian <laughs> accent. All right, let's keep going. On the afternoon of February 12, 1993, ten-year-old John Venables and Robert Thompson would enter a shopping mall in the north. Okay, the fucking. I said this before, but like. <laughs> These kids are evil, dude. Look at this one's face on the left. You tell me that's not straight oh, evil? God. That's a demon face. That's the type of face where you're like, you have a child like that, and you're like, all right, we got to go again. We got to go back to the fucking drawing board, okay? That's like, nope, we fucked up. Straight up, dude. I'm sorry. I know it's the kid from like, you know, I, I know it's like he's 10 years old, but like, it's just demon. These kids are so young. Like, how do you even... Do you send these kids to jail? Like, how does this work? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean. Really? 10 is, years old murdering no, this a is What you do like, here is work? just a late term abortion. That's what you do. But you can't do that. So I can't do that. So what do you, you do? So you just, yeah, I don't know. You just lock them away. I think oh I, I am for gosh. rehabilitation. Okay. Over incarcerating people. I think our criminal justice system is horrible here in the United States. Okay. Mm -hmm. This story is like the one example where you're like there is no way to deal with these kids in an ethical capacity and you will understand why when we uh when when the details are revealed a little bit further oh you uh, i hate that you already know the details i'm sorry okay we can do one that i have one more that i don't know the details on anyway yeah 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 Northern part but, of right, Liverpool, let's keep going. with the intention of kidnapping a small child something they attempted not once but twice inside a department <gasps> store a woman noticed that two boys were trying to get her two-year-old son's attention moments later she realized he was missing the woman began calling his name and ran outside, where she found Venables and Thompson beckoning the boy to follow them. When Venables saw the mother, he told the boy to go back to her, and they both vanished. Still evil. I mean, this photo doesn't do it justice. Still fucking evil. Yeah. If you got multiple photos where you look like the kid from Omen, and also your name Damien, I mean, that's a, that's a rap anyway, but like, if you got multiple, <laughs> oh my God. you got multiple photos where you look like the kid from Omen is is done. Like the parents really cucked them. Like they they set him up for a lifetime of of evil doing. Yeah, I feel like they did it on purpose. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they <laughs> might as well. Mere luck had saved that child, but also sealed the terrible fate of another. Soon after the aborted abduction, Venables and Thompson were loitering around a candy stand when they noticed two-year-old James Bulger by the door of a nearby butcher's shop. With Bulger's mother momentarily distracted, they Be got the evil. toddler to come with them. Venables then took him by the hand and led him away. James and his abductors were caught by a surveillance camera leaving the mall at 3.42 p.m. By this time, James's mother Denise was panicking. She quickly found mall security personnel and described her son and what he was wearing. They announced the boy's name over the loudspeakers, but there was no sign of him, and he was then reported missing to the local police station. After the boys had led James away from the mall, he began crying out for his mother. They ignored him and continued Aww. down to a secluded area near a canal where they dropped him on his head and left him on the <gasps> ground crying. A woman passing by noticed the child but did nothing. The boys then called for James to come, and he still followed. His forehead was bruised and cut, causing his abductors to pull his jacket hood over his head to hide the injury. They then walked away from the canal and through a residential street, where one witness later reported noticing a small child crying while being forcefully led by two older boys. She didn't report the incident, but gave a statement five days later. I've heard people saying, why didn't someone do this and why didn't someone do that? But you know, now the guilt, the guilt's there. I don't think I'll ever get this, this guilt. <laughs> I see oh, them. you bitch. I hate the baby because no, I... No, I, I feel terrible because, like, cause think about it. Like, you see two kids with another kid. You're just thinking, oh, like, you wouldn't they're expect, siblings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like That's true. You, you would think that they're, like, regular siblings. They're just, like, fighting, whatever. Uh, normal kid shit. Like, you would never think, like, oh, these 10-year-olds are fucking kidnappers you know what i mean that's true yeah that's true i've never i've never heard of a story like this where yeah. it's like actual kids doing this the kidnapping yeah. just it's the uk this, this is what's happening i guess and i watch them oh god i watch them i i've got to look out this window every day you see these kids 
I go to bed and I see these kids. A second witness also noticed the trio while driving, but only reported the incident when the story hit the front page of the national news three days later. I went to the police that same day, on the Monday, and reported the incident. And I said to the police at that stage, you know, I hope that it wasn't him, because I couldn't live with the thought that I could have done something about it. At some time between 5.45 and 6.30 p.m., Thompson and Venables brought the exhausted two-year-old to a railway. When they arrived, the boys hesitated, perhaps reconsidering what they were about to do, and briefly turned away from the embankment. But then they both turned back toward the privacy of the area, and the brutal torture and murder of James Bulger occurred. Eventually, the two boys placed James's dead body across the train tracks in hopes of making the whole thing look like an accident. They then abandoned the scene what? before a train came and severed oh, yeah. the toddler in two. With little to go on, Bulger's parents were initially the prime suspects, but when police saw the CCTV footage from the shopping mall, the story went nationwide and the search for Bulger intensified. His body was discovered two days after his disappearance. An anonymous phone call to the police then implicated John Venables and Robert Thompson as the killers. The caller told police that Venables and Thompson were both absent from school on the Friday of the abduction. Both boys were then taken in for questioning. He said that the two of you were in the strand and that you saw the little boy. We never. We never. Is that the God's honest truth? God's honest truth. I'm, I'm telling you that we never. He was too scared. He was probably too scared. And he said that you took him by the hand and led him out of the strand shops. We never. He's a liar. Calm down. Oh, can you imagine just like being 10 years old just lying to a fucking adult, dude? Uh, I don't... I'm Psycho. having a hard time understanding how Psycho. they even had the capacity to do this at 10. I'm I don't... I'm so confused. I don't know either. It's like one of those instances where like you're... It's classified differently than uh, antisocial personality disorder like psychopathy or sociopathy. Because they're too young and their brains haven't developed uh, enough. Yeah. So uh, in most circumstances, it's just like, a pe what is it called in kids chat? I forget what it's called. Um, I mean, it's called being a fucking demon. But like, aside from <laughs> that, <laughs> obviously. Oh my god. Uh, a crazy. conduct disorder, right? Yeah. Where, um. It's not even like the same classification. And the reason why this is like a very famous case is because like they changed the laws around it to like kind of mm -hmm. dunk on these kids. It were, I mean, they deserve it. Uh, yeah. The ending is going to frustrate you. No. See, I'm juicing it up though for your, for your audience right now. Like, watch what happens next. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, don't be Come on, all nice. I never got the boy. I never killed him. Yeah, we was, but we never saw any kids there. Snitch. We never got any oh kids. Oh my god. So you were in Bootle Strand. Was you in Bootle Strand? Yeah, but we never got a kid, mom. We... I said this before when we were, I was react. I just, I think I've seen like this video, but a different version of this. But, um. It's wild to me that he has no problem lying to a detective, but immediately, as soon as his mom's like, "What's you and Booth crying to his mom," and he just fucking loses his <laughs> shit. Like that's when he He's breaks self down. Self-reporting right now. Yeah, maybe I'm too comfortable pausing now. Okay, we're gonna stop pausing. We're gonna keep going. We never, we never. Mrs. Venables, would you? Um, I must ask you not to get angry with it. A short while ago, as is detailed on your custody record out there. You had a conversation with your mum and you then requested that myself and Dave Tanner come into the room. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And what was it you told us? That I killed James. He took him on the rail and shot him and started throwing bricks at him. Why did he throw bricks at him? No. Must, did it make him fall over? No. So he's saying he threw a, a, another, the same house brick at him, full in the face, and he didn't fall over. Yeah, he did fall over. And he just kept on getting back up again. 
You wouldn't stay down. Oh my god. What would say while he was doing all this? He was saying stay down, stupid dick and all that. Why did he want him to stay down? I don't know. He wanted him to properly. Just casual. This is so deranged. Told you, demon. I lose idea. Was it to walk towards him? Mine. Was it? What then it was Robert's idea to kill him, and we went outside to the canal. What for? Don't know. We said let's throw him in the water. He was persuading him. He said kneel down and let's look at the water and all that, but he wouldn't. Because when we wouldn't get him down, Robert picked him up and f threw him on the floor, and that's where he got his bump on his head. Where'd you go with him after that? The, the reservoir where that woman spotted us. Is young James walking with you by this time, or are you still having to pull him? He was walking with us. Was he upset, or had he made friends with you? Nice. I know the truth. I believe I know the truth. I was there. That's right. <laughs> this kid's <What>? fucking <laughs> insane. Like this one is this kid is like a psycho, dude. I, I mean the other I hate one's him like, already. The other one immediately is like snitching, like, oh, it was my friend. And then this guy's just like, fuck you, detective. Correct. <laughs> I know a lot of things that have gone on. He's like trying to debate yeah, the detective. Was me that killed him. It wasn't. I never even killed them. <laughs> I'm never having kids. Oh my god. Yeah, no, this is a. Uh, this, this is, is probably... terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll be in a few minutes if you just tell them the truth. Chance to a break in his face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right, try and stop. Right, let's. We've got, we're getting there, aren't we? We're getting to the truth now. Yeah, well, I'm gonna end up getting out of the plane because I've got blood on me. He grabbed just the baby's hand and just walked around the strand. And then he let him go loose then. Did he? When we were by the church, he let him go. And you were with John then? You shook your head. You shook your head. Yeah, I told him to take him back. You did as well? You told him to take him back. You told him to take him back. I don't know. No, you're not getting all the blame. We're just asking your son. We're yeah, trying to find we the truth. Yeah, we usually always get the blame. Wait a minute, Bobby. Listen. <laughs> just, just calm yourself down for a minute, okay? You're right. He said he wants us, Mum. So what? What did you say to him? What did you say? You. We're going to try and find us, Mum. Where did you leave him then? On the reservoir place. I don't believe you would have left him there. You took him away from where the reservoir is and walked down somewhere else. Where? Going towards the police station. I never killed him. The trials of John Venables and Robert Thompson commenced nine months later, and they were both convicted of murder, making them the youngest to be found guilty of the offense in over 250 wow. years. Two days later, on Monday the 22nd of February, the boys were taken to South Sefton Magistrates Court in Bootle for a hearing. Media interest in the case was enormous. Television crews and photographers from all over the world came to Bootle to get a shot at the boys. Mm -hmm. Public anger too had been building for some time in Liverpool, both against the boys and the intrusiveness of the media. A menacing crowd gathered outside the court waiting for the boys to come out. So notice what? how they're saying, let them go? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think they're saying that? Do you think they're saying that because they're like, oh, no, these are innocent kids? I don't know. Because <laughs> they want to fucking murder them, dude. That's why. They're like, let oh. him go so we can kill these fucking kids. You think so? 100%. You'll see in a second. Oh, Absolutely. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. 
Wait, that's so weird. As the boys left mob. in the transit van, bricks were being thrown. People were running up to the side of the transit van, hammering on the <gasps> side with their fists. The I love that there's a chatter in here that says, what the fuck? Where are you getting this? I don't know. Maybe because they're also throwing bricks at the fucking uh, cop car. I, I don't know. That's, that's a reasonable suspicion. Because I know didn't like that one bit. Yeah, they want to murder the kid. Also, we said pre watch There's been a backlash against horror videos as Britain searches for answers in the wake of the James Bulger murder and the life sentences on his schoolboy killers. The case has already split the church and the government in a damaging row over who's to blame. But there's alarm now with a death threat from an uncle of little James. New flowers today oh. marked painful memories of the Bulger trial as politicians and churchmen blamed one another in their search for reasons for the murder. Feelings everywhere were running high today, nowhere more than in a phone-in on BBC Television's Good Morning with Anne and Nick programme, when James Bulger's uncle, who was the one called to identify the child's body, threatened to kill the two boys. Looks to me like everyone's making excuses for them. And there is no excuses, Anne. They took the child, they battered him to death, and if they don't stay in jail forever, if you ever get out... We Again, I just want to reiterate, straight up fucking evil photo okay <laughs> this kid <laughs> this kid does not pass the vibe check the one on the right the one on the left seems like just a like a dumb accomplice you know what i mean he's yeah giving me like, like the like mastermind he's giving right. me henchman vibes you know he was just like he was the muscle of the operation but the kid on the right literally straight up just fucked vibes okay not good he'll be waiting and when we get all of them we've killed him Oh, uh, by the way, they, they, uh, there are more details of the crime that uh, I I believe uh, was taken out of this video because I think the original one had uh, like more details, but um, of like they, what there were sexual things that they did to the baby <gasps> as well. <gasps> yeah, they did. Yeah, they shoved Wait, batteries in in his orifices. Okay, I, I really, 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 really hope these kids are like they're lifers, right? No, this Please is the UK. No, they're not. Okay, let's just keep watching. What? Do it, you know, what? Keep watching. What, to do, uh, what was in their minds to do it? Well, obviously, we couldn't answer that question um, at that time. In the Commons, some MPs struggling to find any kind of action to express their revulsion turned on horror videos that might have influenced the boys. The children had watched cartoons Classic. in this video shop straight after the killing. A month before, John Venable's father had rented Child's Play 3, a mainstream 18-rated black comedy showing a demonic doll being battered to death. The Bulger trial judge surprised the police investigating the case when he suggested violent videos may have played a part in the case. The police said they had no evidence to suggest it. However, responding to criticism, Sky Television said it's dropping tomorrow night's planned screening of Child's Play 3, while another video chain said they were burning 10,000 copies. The youngest murderers this century were driven at speed to an indefinite future in custody, detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. The sentence that has been passed is the only sentence that the court could pass. They recognise that, but no sentence the court could pass would ever bring James back, and nor, in their view, could it ever properly punish those two boys for what they did. They were both given an indefinite sentence, which has no maximum, but has a minimum determined on a case-by-case -case basis. In this case, it was just eight years, and despite public outrage, they would end up serving this minimum sentence, and were each released in 2001, when they were both 18 years old. Lord Wolf has decided no. the tariff should expire Way. today. He says the boys both How is that possible? Dude, it gets worse, How? dude. Just no wait. Way. Just fucking wait, dude. Teen are genuinely remorseful oh my God. and further detention wouldn't be constructive. It was a terrible offence, but they were only children. They were only just criminally responsibility, criminally responsible when it occurred. And it has to take into account the undoubted progress which they've made. James Bulger's mother, Denise Fergus, said she was shocked and disgusted by the decision. It means her son's killers could be out in a matter of months. I'll never forgive them for what they've done, never. I'll take the hate for them to my grave.
They were given new identities and granted legal anonymity for life <gasps> due to the public fury that surrounded the case, and the danger of citizens hunting them down in order to take vengeance. In 2010, John no. Venables was taken back to prison for Watch. downloading child pornography of male toddlers. Yep. He served three years in prison and was released in 2013. Only and they let him out again, dude to be brought back again four years and later. And then he went back again. After a pedophile oh, manual God. that provided instructions on having sex with kids was discovered on his computer, he was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. I'm more... So, normally, you're supposed to have an approach that focuses on rehabilitation, except for the few instances that our current, like, understanding of medicine unfortunately cannot... Fix, I guess, and it's like antisocial personality disorders like psychopathy and sociopathy. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean like every psychopath is violent. Obviously, that's not the case, um, but they are overrepresented in boardrooms, in government, and in the prison population. Um, however, they're incredibly hard to spot, especially criminals, mm -hmm. and also incredibly hard to... Like, our current understanding of it is just not advanced enough. So, this is the one instance where you are... This is the one instance where you're supposed to just, like, keep them under constant surveillance. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's just no... There's no saving John Venables. Like There's just no save. That, that dude is a fucking... He's just a serial pedophile murderer, rapist. Like, he's just gonna he's gonna keep doing it yeah i feel like especially that they're i just i just don't understand how they even get that idea at 10. like did it say anywhere like where they kind of like did they do I mean, anything they, like, they it... said it was a ch uh, child's uh play the movie but that's bullshit like plenty of kids watch movies they don't fucking you know do they murders. don't actually like murder no i think people. what I, my speculation is i think john like the the Demon kid. I think he had like a serious, serious a traumatic fucking, event like, happened to him. Maybe? No, no. I think he's just like fucked up in the head regardless. Like, I think he's a pedophile. Mm -hmm. I think he's like a psychopath. And I suspect he like, you know, I suspect he manipulated the other kid, Thompson, mm -hmm. into committing the crime with him. And uh, that's why he's like a routine offender and re-offender and like kept going back into jail over and mm -hmm. over again. I can't believe it's real that they let him out all those times. I'm so confused. Yeah, someone in the chat says, not every sociopath and psychopath is violent, but clinical psychology is still in its rudimentary stages, the point where we could teach them coping mechanisms, but there's no direct treatment or cure. But then there's also the secondary problem with curing, quote unquote, psychopaths, because like uh, people that come in for a diagnosis are entirely different than like criminal psychopaths that you are trying to work with uh, uh, in the aftermath of them doing like a violent crime. And the reason why that is, mm. the reason why that's a big problem as, as it pertains to treatment is because um, psychopaths are very good at recognizing mannerisms that show, like that, that make it seem like you're empathetic. So they can like oh, that's act so like gross. they're getting better. They can portray themselves as like getting better, especially if they're not interested in curing themselves or or treatment at all and just uh more so interested in like getting out so it's a big problem in the criminal justice uh rehabilitation and criminal justice reform conversations too is just something that mm -hmm. uh is constantly discussed it's like what do you do with these people mm -hmm. you know uh i think keep them in a box <laughs> oh fuck anyway. i don't know if you could actually how do you just like heal from that how do you just become better? Yeah, I don't know. I think Florida. I have an idea. It's called Florida. Uh, we put all the... <laughs> yeah. You just, like, send everyone to Florida, okay? Everyone that wants to just, you know, they go to Florida. You wall off Florida. You take everyone out of Florida that don't want to be there, okay? And then you just let them go, let them go buck wild. Let them loose. In Florida. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's keep going. It's almost done. It's on for president. People are saying that this is the <laughs> this is the shortest run I've ever had on a video, and they're right. 
this is a 20 minute video i would have i would have spent like two hours on this but that's what i heard i was prepared to spend two yeah, hours no. on one since video. you're here i'm just like i'm i'm burning through these you know what i mean hey listen i don't want you to change because you know i'm here no, all right i can't i can't listen we can we can spend two hours on a video and and talk about it i'm down for whatever all right well let's finish this there's another psychopath video that i got lined up after this one let's go i feel right. now that someone is going to mistake someone else's venables and do someone who's innocent harm that's my biggest fear now. Do you trust that the authorities can monitor him properly? No, definitely not. He couldn't demand some the first time. What makes them so sure they're going to monitor him now? They haven't got a clue. I think they're not doing the jobs properly. They've got jobs there to do and they're not doing them. You know, they, they let him slip through with the fingers the first time now, so no doubt it's, it's going to happen again. He got away with so much. He's going to think he's untouchable again and he's going to go and do even worse. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. John Venables. Now, these, these orders, these anonymity orders, are very rare. There was only about four, I think. There's Mary Bell, the child killer from the 60s. Mm. She got one to protect her own daughter. And I kind of think, again, fair enough. Mm. But, John Venables, how many times does somebody have to keep committing a crime? Because what's happening is that his anonymity is protecting him from the crimes that he... You know, it, mm. So, every time he does a crime, we don't know who he is. And then he comes back into society yeah. Does he meet people who don't know what his True. background yeah. is? Mm. You know, and I think he's now committing these crimes as an adult. Mm. He's making his choice to commit these crimes as an adult. Therefore, he mm. has no further right to anonymity. Mm. It's quite interesting. Um... That's oh, it. that's how it ends. Yeah, they always, these videos always end uh, strangely, but... These crimes as... The show is called Loose Women. <laughs> wait, no wait, way. I think, wait, what is the name of the show, chat? I think they briefly, <laughs> wait, yeah, no yeah, way. look, 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 look. What the fuck? Wait, why can't LW, I... at Loose Women. Yeah, it's literally Loose <laughs> Women, dude. Let me jump frame by frame. What a, cra what a strange... This is the view for, for British people. Oh anyway, loose women is the Brit version of the view. Yeah, I, I got that. <laughs> oh my God, you need to watch loose women. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So yeah, that's, uh, that's John Venables. So like I said, there is a problem with treating, there's a problem with treating psychopaths because they can, you know, depict like normal emotional cues make it seem like they're actually have gotten better and deceive uh psychiatrists even if there was like any sort of treatment available it's a very yeah. difficult one mm -hmm. um especially in kids i can't even imagine well yeah oh, and for the people who are God. saying like what about the parents liability this is like a unique instance where i i don't know if it's just like I think one of them was from a traumatic background. I think like one experienced a lot of childhood trauma. But like I said, this is like, I mean, this is just nuts. Mm -hmm. He, he went back in jail after breaching the life license by hoarding child abuse images in here. I'll, I'll give you the full Monty. Okay. Yeah. Tell me what they did. I don't know if you can see this cause I'm not screen sharing the, uh, everything, but so. <clears throat> oh god it's the sun it's the worst uh fucking it is absolutely the worst website on the planet i mean uh, media outlet on the planet but okay um <laughs> so they get the lifelong anonymity they win lifelong anonymity that's unprecedented in january 2001 okay and then in june 2001 they're freed with the new identity september 2008 venables is arrested on suspicion of f ray i don't know what the fuck that means after a drunken brawl and was given a formal warning by the probation service, he was given a caution for possession of cocaine after he was found with a small amount of class A drug later that year. Like, wow. They're, they're very nice about, yeah, uh, they, they got away with letting you like, go. Everything. It feels like, yeah. Um, Venables back in jail in 2010 after breaching life license by hoarding child abuse images. He sentenced to two years after admitting, downloading and distributing indecent images of children. And then in 2013, oh, he's freed from prison. 
And then in 2017, he's, he goes back into prison again for indecent images of children again. And then he's charged in 2018 and he's in jail for 40 months after he admitted to possessing more than a thousand indecent images of children. Yeah. So he's freed again. He's out there. Oh, God. I'm seeing his face again. It's like so freaky. That's so gross. Wait, there's more. What the fuck? He admitted to owning a sick pedophile manual, which is drugged in my house to have sex with little girls at Old Bailey. And then they report that Venables had been attacked in prison with boiling water when an inmate <gasps> discovered his identity, which is normal. That's what happens to like sex offenders, like child sex offenders in prison always. It was revealed to the killers beginning for plastic surgery at the taxpayer's expense after photos allegedly identifying were leaked online. James oh. Bulger's dad, Ralph, reveals he has launched high court proceedings against the order that allows him to live under a cloak of anonymity. And in 2020, he's denied parole and told he will remain in prison for at least another two years before he can apply for parole again. Wow. What a life. Uh, that's insane. Uh, what happened to the other kid? I think the other kid, like, like I said, I think the other kid was just kind of along for the ride. You know what I mean? Because I don't think he he's another, he didn't offend again, I think. Yep, he's probably chilling anonymously. Like, he doesn't have a Wikipedia page because of anonymity? Well, I mean, I guess, like, get a normal life after see rehabilitation works